Okay, we are back in our life, and now the hardest part, making choices. <laughs> what moment to do first? Because sometimes these moments influence other moments, and I just don't know. So, because I'm so good at making choices, and I love flipping coins, <laughs> what I've done is I've got a random number generator and I'm going to hit a button, and then we're going to do whatever number it tells us to do. So for context, this is gonna be number one for me, and then like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then whatever number I get, we'll just do that episode, and it'll be great. <laughs> then I don't have to stress. All right, big numbers, big numbers? Small numbers? Give me a number. Okay. First number is a nine, ooh. So that means we're gonna be doing Runaway. Okay, let's see what happens. It was early and you were on your way to the playground. Lizzie planned on joining you there later. You weren't sure what she was busy with right now. Older kid stuff, you imagined. That was okay. What was forefront in your mind was if Cove might be free to come too. Hi, Cove. As you walked the familiar street, wondering how you might find your neighbor, he appeared right in front of you, almost as if he was a mind reader. Cove, I was looking for you. Come to the playground with me. No. Sorry. Cove looked strangely serious. It had to be an even bigger deal than whatever mystery thing Lizzie had to do. What? Oh, you're running away. Oh man, I packed my bag so many times when I was a kid. <laughs> Memories came flooding back. I did not pack anything that would be useful as a kid. Toys, books, <laughs> no clothes. I don't think I ever packed clothes or food or anything. Eek. I'm leaving, Molly. What? Where? He shifted, and your gaze was drawn to the backpack slung over his shoulders. Cove liked to stuff things into his pockets, from what you've seen, but people sometimes carried bags with them. It hadn't been very attention-worthy until now. The pack was decorated with cartoon waves and dolphins. He gripped one of the straps tightly with his good hand. Oh, he wouldn't let us know. Oh, my heart. I just wanted you to know. Cove didn't glance up and meet your eyes. He started to grow worried. I don't get it. But where are you going? Oh, can I go too? I'll come with you. I mean, like I said, <laughs> I tried to run away so many times. Um, I would probably ask, though. I wouldn't assume. Can I go too? He looked up at that. You hoped he would agree, but instead he shook his head. I'll come back, though. Sometime. I don't know when, but we can do stuff then. He directed a fragile smile your way. Without another word, Cove turned on his heel and started to walk away. Uh... I would be worried, though. I would be worried. Wait! He kept going. His focus wasn't on you anymore. What was that about? You watched as his back grew smaller and smaller. Then you realized that you were still standing in the middle of the, of the sidewalk. You thought about your earlier plan of playing up the park. Suddenly, it didn't seem as fun anymore. Not without Cove. But it wasn't like you could force him to play with you. He had things to do. I mean, I'd probably go play at the park. <laughs> I'd be kind of bummed, but I'm like, well, he doesn't want me, and I was gonna go to the park, so I'm gonna go park. It was still sad Cove wouldn't be there, but you wanted to stick with the plans you had on your own. Maybe Cove and his dad were going on a vacation. That had to be it, you reasoned. After all, Cove said he was gonna be back. He wasn't moving again. You resolved to spend time with Cove when you saw him next time for sure. 
After a couple hours at the playground by yourself, it had gotten firmly into afternoon. You were on the swing set. Yep, that is exactly where I'd be. With your feet buried in the sand when you spotted Lizzie in the distance. She was rushing over like something was on her tail, chasing her. You knew she was coming, but was she that excited to get to the park? Instead of nabbing the swing beside yours, Lizzie stopped in front of you. She bent over, balanced her hands on her knees, and panted. Did you hear? Hear what? Lizzie bounced back up, her eyes blown wide. You only saw her this worked up when she found the new hiding place of Mom's sugar stash. It's about Cove! Cove? Something in the pit of your stomach dropped at hearing his name. You listened intently as Lizzie explained. I just came out when I saw lots of people gathered around, in the middle of the street. They were talking kind of quietly, so I don't think I was supposed to hear, but that just means it was important. <gasps> so I snuck up, and I heard everything. She paused dramatically. Clearly she wanted you to say something. Tell me. Lizzie raised her eyebrows at your insistence and she continued easily. Cove is missing. He left a piece of paper for Mr. Holden to tell him he was going away and would be gone for a long time and no one's seen him since. Now they're searching the whole neighborhood. The grown-ups were even saying that if they don't find Cove soon, they'll call the police. The police? This was horrible. You had seen Cove. You knew he was going someplace, but you had no idea it was like that. Was Cove going to be arrested for running away? You thought you might have to go to jail too for not saying anything and letting him go. You glance back at Lizzie. Should you tell her that you'd known about Cove leaving? Or would it be better to keep that to yourself? I would keep it a secret because I'd be scared she'd tattletale on me and I'd go to prison. Now wasn't the time to bring it up. Actually, finding Cove was more important. Plus, all of this wasn't your fault. You had no idea that things would turn out so bad. You watched as your sister began to pace in front of you. I know Mom said Cove was sad about moving here, but running away from home is crazy. Jeez. Where else is he gonna go anyway? Um... Yeah, I, I would want to find him, definitely. I'd be, like, super worried about my friend. I want to find him. Lizzie scrunched her face up, thinking deeply for a moment. Then she nodded and planted her hands on her hips, determined. I'm gonna look, too. You are? Mm-hmm. We can play at the park any day. And the more people there are looking, the quicker someone will find him. Maybe I'll be the one who does. I'm the best at hide-and-seek, after all. It seemed like Lizzie wanted to look not only because she was concerned about Cove, but also because it was the most interesting thing to happen this week. Wish me luck! Before you could say anything, she ran off in the opposite direction from where she came. You were left in the dust in a matter of moments. That was your sister for you. But Lizzie's appearance in this crisis faded to the back of your mind just as quickly. Cove. He told his dad he was leaving to go somewhere by himself. Why did Cove suddenly decide to do that today? Did something bad happen? It was impossible to say for sure. Unfortunately, you had no idea where he could have gone. You thought hard. There were the hills behind your house. He had gone there the first time you met. But someone would have checked there already. They wouldn't need the police for that. Cove must be far away or hiding somewhere if the whole neighborhood was looking for him. You swung back and forth, your lips pursed in contemplation. If I were Cove, where would I go? Lizzie had said Cove was crazy for running away from home, but he never considered Sunset Bird his home, did he? His real home was somewhere else. There was only one place that came to mind that might be important enough for Cove to go off like this. It was a good idea, except how was he going to get there? Could he take a bus? 
Was he going to walk the whole way? He didn't know what direction he needed to take. But... Wait, there was only one way he could go. Going down the street just led to the beach, so that couldn't be right. Going to either side would mean he'd get stuck by buildings and fences and big slopes like the one behind your house. That left going up the street. You knew that road. It led into the main part of town and kept going all the way to the city limits. Cove didn't know the area well. He didn't think he'd want to go off that road onto some random other street. Which meant, if someone followed that path, they might find him somewhere along it! The grown-ups seemed to all be looking in the neighborhood, so... <laughs> this would be a very stupid idea. But it is exactly what I would do. <laughs> I would definitely be like, I've had a brilliant idea, I must go by myself, and then I'll get in trouble later. There was no time to lose! You rushed to where you had abandoned your flip-flops and slipped them on. They slapped against the sand as you left the playground. You went right up along the main street, keeping an eye out for Cove. No one else had the same idea as you, it seemed, because you were completely alone there. I'm sure this is fine. You passed through your whole neighborhood, and then the next one over, and the next. You hurried down the sidewalk as fast as you could without running. You recalled Lizzie's comment about hide-and-seek. It really did feel like Cove was hiding from you somewhere and you had to find him. You kept walking. You even called out for Cove a few times. But you didn't see that familiar mop of green hair anywhere. I'm gonna get lost too. After a while, the sun began to dip out of the sky. It would be dark soon, and there was still no sign of your neighbor. You weren't even in the residential district by this point. You had reached the central part of town. You made it to the grocery store. The area was at once strange and familiar. You'd been here before, of course, but never without your mom's close by. They would drive you. Not even Lizzie was allowed to come here by herself. Would Cove have been determined enough to go even further? Cove? You shouted his name a few times, as you had done periodically this entire time. But there was nothing. Maybe he's not going this way. Was he somewhere else? Has someone found him already? Oh, gosh. I, I'd probably be stubborn. I'd probably keep going. <laughs> uh, it'd have to be, like, dark for me to be like, I gotta go home. While there's light, there's hope. You were able to make it this far. You had to continue the search. With that in mind, you pushed yourself to walk a little faster. People said this was a really tiny town, but to you it felt absolutely gigantic. Oh dear. It is nighttime now. Eventually the business part of town ended too. There was no sidewalk anymore, only a long expanse of road. You walked on the grass instead. Onward was the only option. Your journey stubbornly continued. Oh gosh, I she went so far, girl. <laughs> it's beautiful. Your feet hurt, you were tired, you were on your own, but somehow you had reached the very edge of Sunset Bird. That's what the sign told you. You had lived in Sunset Bird forever, and it was a very rare occasion that you'd see this sign. Most everything in your life happened inside the city limits. The endless road ahead seemed scary in a way. It paralyzed you, and finally put an end to your forward momentum. You scanned your surroundings instead of dwelling on that. You deeply hoped he hadn't gone past that sign either. Hey! Cove! Where are you? The previous times you'd called his name, there had been no answer. You couldn't be surprised that one didn't come this time either. Until... Molly? <gasps> I found him! I'm so happy! I'm so glad I didn't turn back! A dark blob just behind one of the exit sign's legs shifted. You squinted as it continued to move. The more you stared, the more your eyes adjusted, and the more that dark blob resembled a person. Then you realized just who it was. It was Cove! He was here! You actually found him! 
He hesitantly got up from where he'd been sitting, as if to make sure he had actually heard something. Then he caught sight of you, his eyes wide behind his glasses. Um, are you crazy? Yeah, I'd be I'd just be like really happy. I'm so happy you're here. Ko finally blinked as you ran up to him, your feet still aching. How how did you find me? You said you were leaving and you've always wanted to go back home. So I thought you must have come this way. Oh. And that was all he said after all of this. Maybe he didn't realize how seriously the adults were taking it. Yeah, I'd be like, are you okay? Like, this is, this is important to me. Are you okay? Yeah. He didn't look okay. His brows were pinched and... Brows? Bro? Yeah, brows. Br bros. His bros. His brows were pinched and his shoulders tense. You got the feeling pointing that out wouldn't help matters. Everyone's looking for you. That caught his attention. He frowned at you. Really? They are? Yeah, the whole neighborhood. Lizzie told me they might even call the police. We might get arrested! What? Why? I don't know, because you tried to run away, probably. And I knew, so I'm your, um, accomplice. Was that the word? You thought so. You'd heard it before on those detective shows Mommy liked to watch. We're not gonna be arrested. Although Cove said that, he looked a little worried over the news. Come on, Cove. Let's go home. No. He spoke crossly. You were thirsty and exhausted, and you weren't sure you could keep going back and forth about this. <laughs> You're stupid! Why? Why can't we just go? Your unhappiness caused him to waver, but not budge. At first, Cove was quiet. He started to think he wouldn't say anything. Then he spoke. My mom called today. To check up on me and stuff. She asked what Sunset Bird was like and how I was doing. It was okay. But... When I asked if she'll come here, mom said she couldn't. I can't go back either. Not right now. She has to move to somewhere else first. Cove glared at the ground. His voice cracked as he continued. It's not fair. Why can't I even see her anymore? He used his uncasted arm to rub both of his eyes. I'm gonna go myself. I don't need anyone to take me. Yeah, by this point, I would probably just start crying. <laughs> I feel so bad. Like, of course you want to see your mom. But I'm like, but I, I just, I can't go any further and we're going to be arrested, man. Cove's eyebrows shot up as though he hadn't expected you to have this kind of reaction to what was happening. <laughs> What's wrong? You didn't give him any answer. When the surprise wore off, he tried more softly to coax a reply out of you. Are you okay? Mm. Gosh, so many options. These options are so good. Man, trying to put myself in little me shoes. I wasn't very articulate though. <laughs> I'd probably just be like, I don't feel good. <laughs> no, I don't feel good. His lips clamped together, and he awkwardly held his hands up in front of him, as though he wanted to do something but wasn't sure what. Maybe something in the first aid kit can help you feel better? I don't think so. You took a first aid kit? You were way smarter than I was. I... I'm sorry. Then he shook his head, like he was trying to clear it. When he spoke some more, it was mostly to himself. If I don't go see Mom, then she's... Fresh tears glistened in Cove's red-rimmed eyes. 
He stubbornly tried to blink them away, but they slipped down his cheeks. He frowned at the sight. No matter what, you hated seeing him cry. Then she what? Mom doesn't call that much. And I haven't seen her in so long. Cove hiccuped, wiping his face with the back of his arm. His glasses got shoved up awkwardly as a result. If I don't go, she'll be gone. She'll forget about me. She wouldn't do that. How do you know? She's your mom. She loves you. Your mom's always said that, so it must be true for Cove's mom, too. Cove sniffled. He seemed conflicted. <sighs> I'm not sure if that's right. You were at a standstill. Yeah, this is this would be what I would say. We can't stay here forever, and we can't go out there. We've got to go back. Cove's brows furrowed, a scowl appearing on his lips. He turned away from you. You stared at his back. You couldn't just stop. Come on, Cove. After a few minutes of sullen silence, Cove twisted back around. He wouldn't look you in the eye. Let's go. I don't want you to get in trouble. I don't want something bad to happen. He was doing it for you. That gave you a warm feeling inside, even if you wish he didn't want to leave in the first place. And that was that. Together, you walked away from the exit sign. Your feet hurt a lot by this point, and you were so tired, but you'd convinced him. You were bringing Cove home, and that's what mattered. On the long walk back, it was only thanks to the occasional street lamp and faint moonlight that you could see in the dark night. You were content to stick close together. Sometimes your drowsy walking caused one of you to almost bump into the other. The back of your hand brushed his. Ooh la la. Hmm. <laughs> I would not be so bold as to take his hand in this particular situation. I did have a guy friend at this age who would hold my hand though, and I was totally fine with it, so sure. Cove glanced at you sheepishly. His fingers curled around your palm and you held on in response. Oh, my heart, it's so wholesome. The two of you continued down the street, hand in hand. You wondered if everyone was still looking for Cove. And you too, probably. Do you think they called the police after all? No. Probably not. He didn't sound confident, though. You still hoped he was right. You didn't want to go to jail. <laughs> Priorities. You weren't sure how much time passed. All you knew was that one moment you were fighting the drooping of your eyelids while shuffling near Cove on the sidewalk, and the next you were snapped back to attention by the blaring beep of a horn. Cove froze. You whiffed around to see a car approaching you. It was difficult to make out who it was, the headlights were so blinding. Instead of continuing down the road, the car slowed near where you sat. The window rolled down, revealing the face behind the wheel. It was very familiar. Mom! She shouted back, and not just because there was some distance between you and her. Yeah, I can only imagine what I've put my mom through. I'm sorry! Where have you kids been? I've been looking everywhere for you! The town exit sign. She blinked. What? You know what? Never mind. She stopped looking at you, instead staring hard straight ahead. Both her hands were gripping the wheel. In turn, Cove gripped your hand tighter. This was hard to face. Guilt ate you up from the inside. All right. Get in. Let's get you two home. That, at least, made her showing up worth it. Your feet were aching like crazy from all the walking you'd done today. You yanked open the side door, slipped inside the back seat, then clambered over so Cove had enough room to climb into. 
He followed in wordlessly, tucking his backpack near his feet. Your mom looked at you and Co. from the rearview mirror. The two of you had us extremely worried. That wasn't a good thing to do. Not at all. Shamefaced, you both nodded as one. Sorry. Mrs. Waverider. Sorry, Mom. She softened immediately. Not enough to actually let it go, though. I mean, more than anything, she's gonna be relieved that you guys are actually safe, but, like, the panic you put her through. <laughs> You'll have to apologize to everyone else, too. With that, Mom started the car up again and you were off. For the rest of the car ride, no one said anything. You thought all of you were pretty tired. In fact, you must have dozed off at some point because you woke up to the sound of the engine stopping. When you opened your eyes, you realized Cove was looking over at you. He was tense. We're back. You yawned and got out of the car. Cove came out after, putting his backpack on again. Mom locked the car door and motioned you two towards the house. She opened the front door and let you go in first. Mommy appeared quickly. She must have been waiting nearby. There was a phone in her hand. It worried you, thinking about who she might have been talking to. The tight line of her shoulders relaxed when she saw you in Cove. <sighs> oh, thank goodness. You found both of them. <sighs> yes, I did. They were walking down the main street together. What were you two doing there this time of night? Do you have any idea how far that is? How unsafe? You peeked at Cove. He still looked exhausted. His eyes were puffy and there were dry tear tracks stuck to his cheeks. I wanted to see my mom. Molly came to get me. Your own mom shared a look. You weren't sure what it meant, but they always did that. You wondered if they could read each other's minds. Since they were communicating telepathically, you stole a glance around the house. Lizzie wasn't anywhere in sight. Could she be outside somewhere searching for Cove still? Where's Lizzie? Your sister's in her room, fast asleep. The same way you should have been. I'm glad she was worried about me. She came back earlier. She had been out looking for Cove after accidentally finding out he was missing. She tried to pretend otherwise, but she was worried. Okay. I know, we're kids. You can only stay up so long before you just fall asleep. Said she checked all the hiding places she could think of, but she couldn't find Cove. You and Cove exchanged remorseful glances at that. Mommy noticed the discomfort. Okay. You two must be sleepy. You can sit down wherever you like. Mommy smiled warmly and motioned to the living room. Cove looked up at her, then lumbered over. <laughs> you followed close behind. The living room wasn't far, or separated by a wall, so you heard your mom's talking softly. He wanted to go see his mother. Poor thing. Well... That explains it, at least. Still, I'm not sure it excuses it. It was so, so dangerous to go off into town like that. He's having a hard time right now. You can't expect a child to handle it maturely. True. It can't be helped. But that's enough of that. We should tell Cliff and the others that he's here before the panic gets out of hand. There could be riots. Is that all right? I'll call, then go to the front to tell everyone still out there. You keep an eye on the kids. Make sure they don't take any more trips today. Got it, hun. Cove just sat there on the couch, setting his backpack down beside him. He stared at his hands. I'm sorry, Molly. You faced him quietly. Mm. I didn't want to make you feel bad. I don't want to fight. I'm sorry, too. You don't have to. It wasn't your fault. It's alright. Despite Cove's protest, you couldn't help it. It would have been too hard not to say sorry after a disagreement. But having him apologize did make you feel much better. You had more to say to Cove and to ask him, but before you could, the front door opened. Your mom was back, with Mr. Holden close behind her. 
He made a beeline for the couch, his gaze trained on his son. Cove? God, are you alright? Strands of his hair had fallen out of his ponytail. His eyes were darkened like he'd been crying too. Cove stared up at his dad, his own eyes wide behind the frames of his glasses. He really hadn't expected it to be such a big deal. I'm okay. Good. That's good. I'm so glad to hear that. He clasped a hand on his son's shoulder, attempting to smile. But the corners of his lips twitched and spasmed as if they wanted to wilt into a frown instead. Cove seemed to have that effect on him. Mr. Holden turned to you, still smiling weakly. I'm so happy you're alright too, Molly. Then he looked at your mom's. Thanks for your help. As always. He laughed pitifully. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm very sorry for ruining your afternoon with this. I can't apologize enough. It's okay. It was no trouble, Cliff. Really. It couldn't be helped in a way. Something was bound to happen sometime. Besides, he wasn't the only one who decided it was a good idea to disappear today. Exactly. We're just happy the kids are safe and sound. Not for the first time that day, you recalled your original meeting with Cove. He had run away then too, only not as far as he had today. Cove must have had a similar thought because he mumbled an apology. Sorry, Dad. I... I won't leave anymore. Promise. Some life seemed to return to Mr. Holden thanks to his promise. This time around, his smile was more genuine. Aww. I'm so glad. That's a relief to hear. Next time you feel like running off, come to me first, okay? We can talk about it. I'm here for you. Cove nodded. His dad reached out and mussed his hair playfully. Although he made a face, Cove didn't try to dodge the hand as he usually did. Let's go home, bud. I'd bet you're as tired as I am. Mr. Holden took over carrying Cove's backpack, still clasping a free hand on his son's shoulder when he stood up from the couch. The five of you walked over to the front door so you could see them off. Mr. Holden thanked your moms profusely at least three more times before he walked out the door. Cove was made to follow. But he stopped and turned to you before stepping through the threshold. Thanks. Molly. Good thing I was there. A tiny smile flitted across his lips. There and then gone. I would not be so bold as to hug him. <laughs> not yet. I, me, me, the person like right now in this moment, I would love to just hug this kid so badly. I'll wave. See you. Bye. And with that, Cove left. Mommy closed the door behind them. You were practically dead on your feet at that point. Your fatigue must have been obvious because your mom sent you right to bed with no more discussion on what happened that day. I like our little hermit crab boy up here, by the way. He's super cute. Once your head hit the pillow, your eyes slipped closed on their own. Your eyelids were so heavy you couldn't open them again until the next morning. You woke up much more at ease than you had felt when you were last conscious. It was almost like it was a dream. But it definitely wasn't. Your mom's faces when you saw them assured that. After breakfast, you were sat down and your family went over yesterday's events in full. They were none too pleased that you went out to find Cove on your own. Yeah. As punishment, your moms took away your TV privileges for the next few days. Lizzie was annoyed that she couldn't watch her shows with you around, but she adjusted. Whenever you expressed disappointment, your moms reminded you that they weren't punishing you for no reason. It was dangerous to go out on your own so late and without telling anyone. You could have gotten hurt or worse. As upset as you were, you understood. Mr. Holden talked to Cove about what happened too. You didn't know what was said exactly, but Mr. Holden forgave Cove immediately. He didn't do anything to punish Cove for running away. Gosh dang it. 
<laughs> this is my childhood. I'm the only one getting punished here. He blamed no one but himself for Cove's desire to leave home. Poor Mr. Holden. You caught your moms discussing it once in hushed tones, frowning at each other. It was pretty serious. There was a word used you hadn't heard before. Self-flagellation. But there wasn't anything they could do to change Mr. Holden's mind. Your neighbors stopped you and Cove often for the next week or so to express their concerns and disapproval of the event. Still, as they always did, days continued to pass. So did talk about Cove running away. Things eventually returned to normal, as they had to. Summer kept going, and you kept having experiences you shared with Cove. Hey, we did it. <laughs> All right. I think we got time for one more. Let's get, let's get another number on here. Ooh, number one this time. Hold on, let me fix all my things. Boop. All right, we're going shopping. <laughs> After that excitement, let's just have a nice relaxing shopping day. Why not? Come back before it gets dark, all right, sport? The familiar voice drifted across the street and drew your attention away from the snail you'd been watching inch slowly across the pavement. Cove waited in front of his dad, pushing his green hair back off his face from where the breeze was blowing it over his glasses. He looked to be paying only a mild amount of attention as he was being handed a few slips of green paper. It reminded you of when you'd first met Mr. Holden, although he's probably not paying Cove to be friends with himself. Cove's dad seemed to feel your gaze somehow, or maybe you made a noise because a second later his eyes were on you. He waved you over with a smile. He looked happy to see you, but you still felt a little weird for getting caught. You've got to learn how to be more sneaky. Agreed. You brushed your hands together to free them of sand, then jogged over to join the two, smiling at Cove first and then his dad. Molly! <gasps> My name! Hi! How's it going? Good to see you again. What excitement are you up to today, Molly? Stuff! I found a really cool snail across the road. He was slimy, with funny eyes and a nice shell. Mr. Holden grinned at your enthusiasm. After you finished answering the question, Mr. Holden's attention returned to Cove, who was preoccupied with folding the bills he had into a tiny rectangle. Sounds fun. You know, Cove was about to hit the stores by the beach. Why don't you go with him? You gave a ready nod, trying to squint in the direction of the stores like you could see the goods they had to offer all the way from where you stood. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. I don't mind. Great! I'm sure you guys will have loads of fun. Mr. Holden reached into his pocket and pulled out a leather wallet filled with money. You found it odd, since your moms only ever seemed to have cards in theirs. Here. He leaned in to pass a crisp ten to Cove, giving him a wink and a whisper. Get something for your friend, too. Sure. Good kid. That's my boy. I see what you're up to. I see your game, Mr. Holden. <laughs> Cove's dad ruffled his son's hair as he was straightening back up, the bill in his hand still held out towards the green-haired boy. Take care! Cove accepted the bill after a second and slipped it into his pocket. Then with one last nod to his dad, he turned and started walking. He followed after him, intrigued at the possibilities this outing might bring. Cove strayed towards the gentle tide creeping up the sand and you fell into place beside him. It was a nice day. The sun was shining and there weren't many clouds in the sky, though the wind coming off the ocean kept it from being too hot. You took in a deep breath, enjoying the scent of salt and ocean air. When you looked at Cove, he was dragging his feet through the sand a little, and you slowed down to wait for him. His eyes searched the ground intently. Are you looking for shells? Cove started a little at the sound of your voice and mumbled a sort of. <laughs> if you see any, you can let me know. You can manage that. You dropped your view to the sand, walking carefully so you didn't step on any. You were good at finding shells. You had a lot of them at home and always found new ones whenever you visited the beach. The comforting sound of the waves filled the silence with pleasant white noise, and you played a little game with yourself as you walked along, getting as close to the water as possible without getting wet. 
It resulted in you having to run up the sand quickly when a wave rushed in more than a few times. And although Cove threw a few glances your way, he didn't say a word. Um... What did you want to go to the shops for? I need a new sand pail. Yeah? What happened to your old one? Cove narrowed his eyes, seeming to think deeply for a second. Whoa. It disappeared. What? Really? Cove ducked his head down, lacing his fingers behind his back. It didn't seem like he was going to continue, so you nudged his arm. How did that happen? Well... Cove opened his mouth, then shut it again, considering. Hmm... I took it to the beach one day. Uh-huh. When I got home, it wasn't anywhere. You left it there? Nope. It wasn't at the beach when I went back. Then you lost it! It disappeared. So... What about you? What do you do out here? Um... I really like swimming. Cove's lips curled up in a small smile. Me too. It occurred to you that you hadn't been swimming in a while. There was just so much to do before school started up again in so little time. And now Cove is a giant. Once you reached the shopping area, the noise level grew exponentially. No longer just waves and footsteps, but the chatter of people enjoying the lovely summer day, the call of birds trying to find bits of food left behind, and lots of salespeople trying to get attention. You sniffed the air as you walked beside Cove. You could still smell the ocean, but there were other scents now, too. Pizza, pretzels, hot donuts. <laughs> it was not very nice. It was alright. It was nice. The energy surrounding the area seemed to fill you, and there was a bounce in your step as you began looking at all the familiar sights. There were so many things to do, you didn't know where to begin. You looked at Cove, hoping he was just as excited as you were. Cove was glancing from one side of the street to the other with a look in his aquamarine eyes that you couldn't quite work out. Um, what's that? Cove pointed to a large crowd of people gathered near a few tables with large, colorful umbrellas blooming from their middles. You couldn't see past the adults who were blocking the way, but you knew there must be something worth seeing. Without another word, the two of you hurried over to see what all the commotion was about. Oh, the amazing Alexander. Feast your eyes on the amazing Alexander! In the center of the crowd was a man with a tall hat and a funny green coat that had three long tails. There was a little table next to him with a cloth hanging over it that read The Amazing Alexander in glittery golden script. Why tell people his name if it's already on a sign? Cove hummed with understanding, then turned to walk away just as The Amazing Alexander began shuffling a deck of cards. I want to see the show! Cove glanced back at the man. He then briefly lifted his arms up off his sides before returning them to place. Okay. He may not be impressed, but at least he didn't ditch you. You grinned, waving for him to follow you as you raced back to stand in the crowd. With that, it began. The magic man pulled one card out of the deck, showing it to the curious onlookers. It was a four of diamonds. Watch closely! You did, squeezing through a few of the adult onlookers to get a better view. Suddenly, the man snapped his fingers and the card just... disappeared. Whoa! The amazing Alexander, who had earned his title, turned his head and looked directly at you. He reached out with a kind smile. What's this behind your ear? Um... Nothing? It was true. He didn't keep anything there. He smelled like popcorn and candy when he stepped closer, and you wrinkled your nose in confusion as you watched him. He felt a tug, and then he pulled the four of diamonds out from behind your ear. What? You knew that it couldn't really have come from your ear, but you still didn't get how he'd done it. There was light applause from the crowd, and the man gave a deep bow. This is for you. The magician plucked a pair of balloons from a clump of them tied down to his table. Both were in the shape of a dolphin instead of being a normal circle. And one for your friend, too. Thank you.
Thank you for being my assistant. Wow. Now you were really grateful he chose you. After that, he went to someone else in the crowd. Pick a card. Any card. Mm. My uncle does that every time he visits. Not the balloons, the stuff with cards. Cove spoke plainly while reaching over to take the dolphin that had been designated for him. I would. I wonder if Cove's whole family was magic. If so, he was lucky. The crowd started to clear some and you noticed to the side there was a whole rack of brightly colored kaleidoscopes on display. Ooh, kaleidoscopes, eh? I mean, kaleidoscopes are pretty cool. Oh, Cove, check this out! You shifted your balloon string to your other hand so you could bring the mysterious tunnel to your eye. A whole palette of colors appeared right in front of you, spinning into all kinds of different shapes as you twisted the end of the tube. Hmm. Cove picked one up and looked through, twisting the tube at the end. After a second, he set it back on the rack, moving to the other side of the stall. He went under the awning, careful of his own floating dolphin, and you joined him. Hmm. Either this or this. I probably wouldn't say anything. He stood in silence for a few moments, waiting for Cove to do something. When he finally moved towards some stalls nearby, you followed behind him. Oh, so cute! While Cove looked at sand pails, you were drawn to a table with colorful keychains laid on out on it. They were sewn in the shape of sea creatures, and there was a plaque that read, Handmade, standing proudly in front. There were lots of different types. He saw a dolphin, a shark, a crab, a turtle. Ah, choices. I've always really liked turtles. Your hand stopped on the sleeping turtle, just barely poking its head out of the shell. It had flecks of metallic green on its back that caught the sunlight when you picked it up. You remembered the turtles you had seen in a movie. You had been mesmerized by the way they gently glided through the water. You were instantly enamored. Checking the price, though, your heart fell. Six dollars. You didn't know much about money, but you thought that was a lot to spend on one thing. <laughs> what happened to my 20 bucks from Mr. Holden? You rarely had more than a $5 bill to your name. Though, that changed the day you met Cove and his dad. You still had the $20 bill Mr. Holden gave to you hidden away in your room. Dang it, I didn't prepare. It was a grand sum of money, but you couldn't spend something that was at home instead of in your pocket. Maybe you'd have to ask your moms to bring you here again one day, now that you knew what you wanted. Is that what you want? Huh? Oh! It's six dollars. I didn't bring any money. Alright. It's fine. Is it? Um... I'd probably be like, are you, like, like, I'd want it, I'd want him to buy it for me, but I'd also be like, oh, but are you sure, though? Are you sure? Cove took the keychain from your hands, and that was that. He was holding a small yellow bucket for himself, too. I was always gonna get you something. I already got the money for it. You beamed, excited at the idea of displaying the keychain somewhere in your room. It was nice of Cove's dad to let Cove buy something for you, too. You had to remember to thank him next time you saw him. After Cove paid, the two of you stepped out of the store side by side, your balloon dolphins knocking together and spiraling around in the air. You watched Cove hold up his new pail to his face, examining it thoroughly. Hey, Cove. Yeah? <laughs> Why is your dad always giving people money? <laughs> Thanks for the keychain. Don't worry about it. Cove looked further down the street where different food carts were lined up. He rested his non-cast arm over his stomach, and just as he did, yours let out a light growl. You hadn't eaten since breakfast, and after all of this wandering around, you were definitely ready for some lunch. Let's get some food. Yeah. 
You two wandered around a short while, looking at all the delicacies that were available. Everything looked delicious, and as the different smells, both sweet and salty, wafted over to you, your stomach growled even louder. After passing up hot dogs, snow cones, ice cream, and pizza, you both agreed on pretzels. Excellent choice. Cove got something sweet and cinnamony, and you... I want a plain one because it tastes the best. You licked your lips hungrily as the vendor handed your pretzel over, ready to take a big bite. It had a little sprinkling of salt on it, and that was just how you liked it. Mmm. Perfect. Chef's kiss. Love it. Though the little cup of icing Cove got with his did look delicious. I would like a bite of that, but not a whole one. It, it would be too sweet for me. You found an empty table close enough to the beach that the grit of the sand made terrible noises when you dragged the, the chairs out to sit down. These balloons are going to make it hard to eat. Cove placed his bucket on the table as he stared at his still balled up hand that was wrapped around the string. You opened your mouth to agree before an idea hit you. I know! After carefully placing your pretzel somewhere it wouldn't get sandy, you tucked the balloon dolphin out of Cove's hand and tied it in a delicate bow around his wrist. Oh. Cove bounced his arm up and down in place, testing the stability of your knot. After watching his balloon jostle around but remain attached, he smiled, satisfied. There, now do mine. He repeated the ritual. Cove struggled somewhat with the cast, restricting his fingers on one hand and a string already tangled around the other. Okay. Mmm. Got it. The two of you spent a moment admiring your handiwork, both hands now free to allow easy munching on your pretzels. You bit into the doughy treat, savoring the taste on your tongue with a smile as you looked out over the ocean. After a long time, you finished your pretzel. You were done before Cove. It was boring not having anything to do. That's accurate, I would have stuffed my face. You pulled on the string of your balloon to bring it down to your level. Then you held the dolphin in your hands, manipulating it to make it look like it was jumping through the air. If you turned to face towards the beach, it almost looked like it was swimming in the waves like a real dolphin. A laugh came from your side. When you glanced back at Cove, he had left the remaining part of his pretzel on the wrapper and was gripping his dolphin too. Mine's name is Merryweather. He's the prince of the dolphins. Mine's name is Splash. They star in movies. Mine's name is Cherry. She's actually an alien. Mine's name is Sam. They're just a regular dolphin. I have a terrible imagination, so it would definitely be Sam. There's nothing special. <laughs> it's just a regular dolphin. <sighs> you sighed, thinking about how great it would be to have a pet dolphin of your own. What's yours? Cove considered this question, placing the balloon against the table and resting his free arm across it in contemplation. It's... No! The dolphin exploded! With a loud pop, the dolphin exploded into ribbons. Uh, uh... Oh no! For a second, all Cove did was gape in shock, like you. Then his cheeks puffed up, squinting his eyes, and you saw tears start to glisten. Molly! Oh, don't say my name like that! That breaks my heart! Uh... He'd be okay. Um. Gosh. I'm trying to think. I think I would just. I'd like to say I would offer to give him my balloon. But I know there were. There was more than one occasion where my brother lost a balloon. I'm still. I still feel awful for it to this day. Where he lost a balloon, and I never once thought to give him mine. <laughs> no, never crossed my mind. <laughs> I was such a selfish so and so. Ugh. I would so love to give you my balloon. <sighs> this would probably be the most I would do at this point. Probably an awkward joke. I'd probably, like, start crying with him, though, honestly. <laughs> mm, I'm 
gonna flip a coin. It's, it, it's one of these two because I'm too selfish for that. Okay, heads, make a joke. Tails, find Alexander. Hiya! Tails, all right. Maybe the amazing Alexander is still there? I'm sure he'll give you another one if we tell him what happened. After a long second, Ko gave a tiny nod of his head. In this situation, I would take his hand, because I'm like, I'm here on a mission to help my friend. Not help him in so much as like giving him my balloon, but I'm, I'm on a mission. You took hold of Cove's hand. He brought his gaze back down and gripped yours in turn. The two of you wandered up and down the street, but you saw no sign of the amazing Alexander. Finally, you were forced to give up. Still, it seemed to lift Cove's spirits, and that was good. The passing of Cove's balloon was the last major event of your adventure. Daw. <laughs> well, I held his hand again. <laughs> In the end, the two of you headed back late that afternoon. You separated on the beach, and while Cove went straight home with his brand new sand pail in hand, you decided to sit for a while. You watched the waves and the sunset, fiddling with your new keychain. Another summer day was drawing to a close. It had been a good one, except for the sad final note. <laughs> but did I still have my balloon is what I want to know. <laughs> All right, well, those were both cute. And we held hands twice in two episodes, in two moments. My goodness, we're getting so close so quickly. They grow up so fast. <laughs> I think we'll stop there for today. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. Pfft. Yes, I mean, I would love it for it to be tomorrow. Next time, next episode, we'll see what, epi what uh, moments we'll get up to with Cove then. <laughs>